morning everyone today we are going to start with a third chapter in physics that is motion in a straight line now when you were in grade 9 you had studied about uh, motion right how many of you remember all the concepts which you studied in grade 9 so this is just this whole chapter motion in a straight line is just like how you have studied motion uh, in grade 9 okay whatever you studied now is just a brush up or whatever you are brushing up what you studied in grade 9 a little bit added things are also there in this chapter okay so this is a very interesting chapter one of the easiest chapter in physics okay easiest very very easiest just try to understand the concepts okay so let's start now when i'm talking about motion in a straight line okay this is the third chapter in physics now what do you mean by straight line you all know the line uh, you know in a rectilinear path you call it as a straight line right now what do you mean by motion whenever an object is changing its position with respect to time right now if one object is there it is changing its position continuously with respect to time then i call that the motion is in sorry the object is in motion right so can somebody give me examples of motion there are various examples that we come across right so can someone give me what are the main examples a few examples of motion yes some examples of motion anything that you yes 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 children any example a car moving on a straight line a car moving somewhere okay if a person is traveling from one place to other or uh, planets around the sun right or you can say the motion of pendulum all these are different different examples of motion right so what is motion motion is nothing but when an object changes its position with respect to time okay so that is called as motion now before i go go ahead deeply in motion and all of that first thing is we have to know what is mechanics okay what we have to know is we have to know what do you mean by all right okay still people are joining all right now mechanics is nothing but it's a branch of physics that deals entirely with motion okay motion of various types of motion objects which are at rest objects which are which are having some causes due to it causes due to which the motion is caused or the object which are moving without causes okay so mechanics is nothing but a branch of physics where we study the entire thing about motion okay and mechanics is divided into three major categories first category is called as statics then we have kinematics and then we have dynamics okay so therefore in mechanics what is mechanics a branch of physics that deals entirely with motion okay study of motion we study motion of the objects and that study comes under the major branch in physics called as mechanics mechanics has three branches statics kinematics and dynamics okay so what do you mean by statics children statics is nothing but we study the motion of the objects which are at rest example now if i'm taking a pendulum bob okay this pendulum bob is here right so this is having some you know it is having some there is some motion which causes this pendulum bob to move right so this pendulum bob is at rest basically right so down we know that it has something called as weight and this is something called as the force of tension that is present between that right so the objects which are at rest are studied by statistics okay so the motion basically how this motion happens for the objects which are at rest one of the thing can be if a book is on the table okay if a book is on the table there there exists some force here right and thereby there is some force here some force here some force here right so this is nothing but gravitational force which is acting down is nothing but what there is some reaction force according to newton's third law then you have some force here and some force here then you have normal here right so any kind of object which is at rest the object Uh, you know the study of objects which are at rest is nothing but statics all right now what do you mean by kinematics kinematics is nothing but it's again a branch of mechanics which deals with motion okay which deals with motion and which not only deals with motion 
without its cause. That means forces are not involved in kinematics. All right. So if I'm dealing with kinematics, we don't require force at all which causes motion, but we can find how the motion is caused by using the laws of motion, the equations of motion. We know that v is equal to u plus ab, then s is equal to ut plus half ab square, then v square is equal to u square plus 2as. So all these are equations of motion. Is there any force involved here? No. Right? So there are various mathematical equations which we study and which describes how the motion is caused of a particular object. And that is described in kinematics. Okay? Now where is dynamics? Dynamics is nothing but we study the motion of the object along with its causes. Right? Now if there is a book on a table, okay, if there is some object on the table, now we have to apply a certain force, F is equal to Ma according to Newton's second law of motion, such that this object has to move from one place to the other place, right? If you change its position, which directly, which says that it has motion, change in position with respect to time, why on application of force, okay, why this cause is there, right? The cause which describes it comes under dynamics. Okay, so again I repeat, we have, in mechanics, we have three branches. Statics which completely deals with the objects which are at rest. Okay, then kinematics is nothing but it describes motion without explaining its causes. That is directly we apply laws of, sorry, what is that, equations of motion. Now the third branch in mechanics is dynamics which deals with why this motion is causing. Okay, so what are the causes behind the motion? That is studied in dynamics. Okay, so with this brief introduction, we will study this chapter, Motion in a String Pattern. Now, before I tell you what is motion and all of that, what do you mean by rest? When I if an object stays however it is, okay, now if I'm telling, uh, uh, who is me? If I'm telling Piyusha, okay, Piyusha, if she's sitting as she is, then she is at rest. Or if a ball, basically if a ball, if it is not going, or leave this, leave, take this marker. Okay, if this is a table, if I have kept this marker here, it is at rest. Okay, is it, it is, is it moving anywhere? No, it is staying where it is, right? So therefore I see that this object is at rest. But if I give it a little bit of push, then it starts moving, right? So the position is changing with respect to time. Change in position, which is at rest, starts to move. That is when we say that the object is executing motion, right? So rest is nothing but if the position of the object does not change with respect to time, then we say that it is at rest. Like a ball, okay? Just keep a ball in a field wherever it is. It stays however it is. Until and unless some force comes, pushes it, and then it goes, right? So rest is nothing but it is... The object which does not change its position with respect to time, then the object is said to be in rest. Now similarly, uh, example, you, can you give me some examples of rest? Examples of rest, anyone? When do I say an object is at rest? Some examples of Mama, rest. Mama, go passenger with respect to the other. Mama, my voice is like going. No, no, it's correct, it's correct. Co-passenger with respect to the, the other. The co-passenger with respect to the other one is at rest with each other because uh, because they are both with uh, they, are, they are both going to the same velocity. Okay, okay. So if I'm sitting, then if with respect to me, I am at rest, right? But with respect yes. to other person, they might feel that you're moving and all of that. Why? Because of uh, what do we say? Uh, Newton's second law of motion comes in. Right? Inertial and non-inertial non frames. Right? So, but if I'm not considering any causes and I am at rest with respect to the co-passenger. Yes, that is the right answer. One more, uh, another, thing, another thing can be a person who is sitting basically on a chair or, uh, you know, a book which is right. If I am changing my position with respect to time. Okay? If a position is changing with respect to time, then I say that I am executing motion. Right? Now, you see, uh, motion is nothing but change in position. Like train is moving on a rail, right? Train is continuously moving on a rail. Is train stationary however it is once it starts moving? No. It is changing its position with respect to time. Then I say that the train is continuously in motion, 
right? Then uh, like a walking man or a crawling insect. So all these are different types of, sorry, different examples of motion. Now we have types of motion. Now motion is basically divided into three types. Okay, we have rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. Then we have circular motion. Then we have something called as periodic motion. Okay, so these are three types in motion. Okay, so what do you mean by rectilinear motion? The motion in which the particle moves in a straight line. Suppose this is a particle here. Okay, this is a straight line. So this particle is moving in a straight line. Then we call that this particle exhibits a rectilinear motion. Alright? If a particle is moving in a straight line, then it is said to exhibit a rectilinear motion. Example is motion of sliding body on an inclined plane. So if this is an inclined plane like this, now if this body is moving, it's moving in a straight line. So it exhibits, ex which kind of motion it exhibits? It exhibits a rectilinear motion. Alright? So rectilinear motion is nothing but motion of a particle or object in straight line. It's said to call, it's said to be rectilinear motion. Now what do you mean by circular motion? Circular motion is nothing but, now you take a bob, okay, take a bob, tie it on a string and twirl it round. What will happen? You see that this is your axis. Hand acts like your axis. There is a centripetal force with which you are pulling it, right? And because of the force of centripetal force, you know it's not moving away. It's not going away. But it starts moving round, 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 round. Can you see the particle covers a circular part? The bob covers a circular part, right? So such type of motion is said to exhibit a circular motion. Motion of a particle in a circular part is called a circular motion. Now I can say that earth is revolving around the sun. So how earth is revolving around the sun? Suppose this is the sun here, okay, and these are its orbits. So this earth, which is here, it is revolving around the sun. So this is said to be in a circular motion. Then we, in circular motion, we have something called as rotational motion also. Now what is rotational motion? Now we know, see, uh, suppose this is, this is uh, the orbit, okay. And the earth is, uh, you know, circulating in this direction. But earth also exhibi exhibits rotation about its axis, right? So how it is moving round, 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 still it is rotating about its axis, right? So any object which rotates about its axis is said to possess a rotational motion. Alright, children? So this is nothing but rotational motion. Any object, okay, which is said to exhibit a, uh, you know, it's said to exhibit uh, rotations around its axis, then it is called as rotational motion. Got it? So some examples of circular motion can be an artificial satellite orbiting around the earth or fan blades. When you see the fan, fan blades, do you all have fans in your house? If you can just switch on your fan and look at it, you can see that the blades are moving, right, in a circular path. So we say that they are in circular motion. Then, uh, Alright children, so am I clear with circular motion? Can somebody give me more examples of circular motion? Circular motion? These are very simple concepts. You already Ma'am, the motion of uh, electron or uh, electrons around the nucleus. Great. Excellent example. Electrons around a nucleus. Very good. Very good. Ma'am, I really couldn't give uh, the example of planets because that's an elliptical uh, motion. Elliptical, that's not elliptical, a part, elliptical part, but they go in circular orbit, right? It's an elliptical orbit which they go, but the path which they travel, it, it seems like it is circle, okay? But it's not. It's basically elliptical orbit only, okay? So you can just uh, ignore that, ignore that example. Yes. Anybody else, children? But rotational, rotational motion, you can say that yes, because it's rotating about its axis. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Anybody else, children, who want to give examples for circular uh, circular motion? Yes. Now, if I say there is a circular track field and if you have to run the circular track, track field. So, again, you are in circular motion, right? So, that can also be an example of circular 
motion. Now next we have the third type of motion which is called as the periodic motion. Now what is this periodic motion? Motion of a particle which goes, suppose this is a particle, if it goes to and fro, to and fro, this type of motion is called as a periodic motion. Where do we find periodic motion? You can see in a pendulum clock, right? Pendulum clock. You can see that the part, the bob, the down part of the pendulum is going to fro, to fro. So such type of motion, to and fro motion of a particle is said to exhibit a periodic motion. Clear? Clear with this children? Am I clear? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Can someone give me examples of periodic motion apart from what I gave you of a simple pendulum? Any examples about periodic motion? From a swing. Yes, swing is the best example of periodic motion, right? So these are nothing but types of motion children. Now, based on coordinates, okay, based on coordinates, we have again. One dimensional motion, two dimensional motion, and three dimensional motion. Okay, based on the coordinate system. What are coordinates? Based on coordinates. What do you mean by coordinates? Ma'am, coordinates give the position of an object in that plane exactly. or uh, three dimensional plane. area. Yes, not only can give you a position in any space, okay, in a three-dimensional yes. uh, sphere or it can give you in 2D plane or it can give you even in a straight line, right? So, based on the coordinates, basically we say that the coordinates, okay, so we have coordinates are divided into three types. We have one-dimensional coordinates, we have two-dimensional coordinates and then we have three-dimensional coordinates, okay? Now, based on the coordinates, that is number of coordinates to determine the position of the points or other elements in the space. Okay, so coordinate helps us to find what is the position of that particular point, what is, where is it located in that plane or in that path or in that sphere. Okay, so that is called as coordinate. Now we have one dimensional coordinate, we have two dimensional coordinate and we have three dimensional coordinate. Now what do you mean by one dimensional coordinate? Now, if one, if one coordinate is required to specify the position of the object. Now, if I'm telling that this is x-axis, okay, and this is an object which is at a point O, okay. Now, again, this is minus x, okay. So, I say that, you know, this is called as motion in one dimension. Why? Because only one axis is involved here, right. So, here, either the particle can go in the positive direction, or it can go in the negative direction. There is no other goal here, right? So that is when I say it involves only two direction. It can either involve positive or negative, or it can uh, involve you know upward direction or downward direction. That's all. If it's going like this up and down, then I can say that it has only one axis, and either it is up, either it is down, either it is positive or either it is negative, right? Either it is forward or backward. Then I call that this is in one dimensional. Okay, this object has only one dimension. It does not have any other dimension. So if a particle, if one particle has, is you know, if only one coordinate is required to specify that position of the object, okay, if only one coordinate is required, then I call that this object is in one dimensional. Okay, it is in a one dimensional coordinate system. Now, what do you mean by two dimensional coordinate system? Two, if two coordinates are needed to specify the position of the object in two-dimensional motion, the object moves in a plane. Now, two dimensions are required here. I require x-axis, I require y-axis. Okay? Now, example is, if I keep a paper, a paper on a floor, right? So, if I'm, suppose this is a floor, if I'm keeping this paper on a floor, right? So, you see that this has an x-axis and this is having an y-axis, right? So, then I can say that this paper is in two-dimensional coordinate. Right? See any paper. So the, suppose this is also a paper now. Right? So it has only two coordinates. It has x coordinate, it has y coordinate. Right? So this is called as two dimensional system. If any object, if any object that I'm talking about involves only two directions, sorry, not two directions, it, uh, you know, it has only two coordinates basically. Okay, two coordinates are 
I needed to specify the position of the object. Then I say that the, you know, that object is in two-dimensional coordinate system. Okay. Now, next thing is, so if I want to specify this position, so n, x, comma, y, I will specify it, right? So this is called as a two-dimensional coordinate system. Now, what do you mean by three-dimensional coordinate system? A butterfly, which is, you know, flying. It, ha it is exhibiting three dimensions. It is in a three-dimensional coordinate, right? So you see, three-dimensional means it has x coordinate, it has y coordinate, and it has z coordinate, right? So three coordinates re it requires to specify the motion of one single object. Suppose if I'm taking a butterfly, okay? So this butterfly is moving in this direction, height is this much, and you know, um, length, breadth, height is this much. We say so. This butterfly exhibits what? It exhibits. A, a, it you know it it has it has its motion in a three-dimensional coordinate. Not only butterfly, it can be anything, whatever, any object in space, we call it basically. Three-dimensional is nothing but motion in space. We call them as three-dimensional objects. Now, can you tell me some examples, few examples of one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional? Can someone give me examples? Now, even motion... Ma'am, one-dimensional. Ha, tell me, tell me. Ma'am, for one-dimensional motion, you can say the motion of vehicles on a, a straight road. Correct. Very good. That's right. Motion then for two-dimensional motion, you can give the example of uh, ants or um, like, yes, ma'am, you yeah, can give the example of... Yes, X and Y coordinate they have. Correct. What about 3D? Three-dimensional. Three-dimensional yes, uh, anything which is in space. X, anything. Yes. Yes, anything and everything can be explained by three, like example of water molecules, right? Motion of water molecules. Now again, water yes, molecules sir. have x, y, and z direction. So again, we say that it is in three-dimensional coordinate system. Clear, children? About coordinates? Any doubts? Okay. So after knowing about coordinates, the next thing that we are studying is what do you mean by point object? See, these are all things which you have already studied in grade 9, okay? So, this full chapter, it's so easy that you, you're just brushing off your concepts which you have studied earlier, okay? So, what is point object? Point object is nothing but, uh, you know, you see that an object is, uh, it's called as a point object. An object is considered as a point object if the size of the object is much smaller than the distance it moves in a duration of time, okay? Now, example, if I take one train is here. Okay, there's a train. It is under the journey in a big railway track. Okay, so I say that this train acts as a point object, right? With respect to its track, it is much smaller than the track or distance that it is traveling, right? So this train becomes a point object then. Clear? Understood what is a point object? Point object is nothing but it is an object which is much smaller compared to the other. The other distance that it is traveling. Okay, or not only distance. I can say where the size of the object is much smaller than the distance it moves in a reasonable duration of time. Okay, then I say that it is in a, that it is called as a point object. Now, one more thing can be, earth can be regarded as a point object for studying its motion around the sun. Right? So, earth, can, earth is a point object. It's much smaller compared to its motion around the sun. Right? So, earth becomes a point object. Now, even you, you become a point object compared to this entire world. Right? Or the entire city. So, I'm studying you. That means if I'm studying you, you become the point object then. Right? So, size. It depends on size. If the size is much smaller compared to what distance you're studying, then it is called as a point object. Okay? So, you have an example in your NCRT textbook. Example 1. Okay? So, if you have your NCRT textbook, you can just uh, quickly turn the pages. Okay? It says, in which of the following examples, the motion can... Uh, the body we consider approximately as a point object. Okay, so there are a few examples, three examples they have given you. And they've asked you which do you think is a point object here. Okay, so the first thing that they have given you is a railway carriage moving without jerks between two stations. Is railway carriage a point object? Railway carriage is yes, moving between two jerks of uh, two stations, two different stations. Can railway carriage be considered as a point object here? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Railway carriage is much smaller compared to what distance it is traveling, so it is a point object. Next is, a monkey sitting on the top of a man, cycling smoothly on a circular track. Monkey. Is monkey a point object compared to the track? Ma'am, 
ma'am uh, how big is the track the it depends right see track is definitely bigger right so they said a monkey sitting on the top of a man cycling smoothly on a circular track so if i'm considering the circular track so of course it is much bigger right so can i consider that monkey see monkey and circular track so person cycle is only so big right so if i'm considering the size of a circle with respect to monkey and if the person is going in a circular track cycling so definitely it is much bigger than monkey right yes so therefore what do i what can i say can i see that the monkey is uh, moving in a circular track is a point object or no yes sir yes why because see a man is cycling and cycle is definitely bigger than what monkey is and he is going in a circular path so i can definitely say that the monkey is point object in a circular path now next object example is a spinning cricket ball that turns sharply on hitting the ground it hits the ground that's all they they told see a spinning cricket ball just hits can that be a point object with respect to what distance they have not given the distance so we cannot conclude exactly. that it is a point exactly. object exactly so it's not a point object very good okay so with this brief introduction about point objects now i'll teach you what do you mean by scalar and vector functions scalar and vector functions okay now scalar and vector quantity before knowing what do you mean by scalar and vector you need to know what do you mean by magnitude size of the object a numerical value of the quantity is called as magnitude okay magnitude is always expressed in terms of numbers like how big a size is okay or how vast it is or if i'm considering speed okay how much it is going what is its numerical value so that is called as magnitude basically the size okay size of any physical quantity physical quantity of what what do you mean by physical quantity we have studied in the previous chapter what are physical quantities children a quantity that can be measured yes, using that is physical means physical quantity example length mass time right so mlt that we talk about so which are used to describe the basic units of measurement so any uh, numerical value okay how big a size is or how vast it is okay so that is determined by its magnitude okay and it is always represented by this modulus okay magnitude can never be negative all right so this is nothing but magnitude now what do you mean by direction if i'm say 2 kilometers east then i'm specifying direction 2 meters north i'm specifying direction 2 meters west i'm specifying direction right so wherever so that is called direction east west north south all these are called as direction now scalar are nothing but what those quantities which only have a magnitude but they do not have direction okay they just have a numerical value but they do not have direction in which they are going like mass okay mass i can give some uh, mass of an object is 100 kg do you know which direction this mass is going no we can't specify its direction so mass is nothing but scalar quantity right now similarly if i'm talking about distance distance of 2 kilometers per hour sorry distance of for suppose if i have traveled 100 kilometers distance did i say north south east west no if i'm specifying north south east west then it becomes displacement distance with respect to direction is called as displacement right so therefore you can say or the shortest distance we call it as displacement so 100 kilometers length again so this length or distance is again a scalar quantity length or distance is again a scalar quantity i have not mentioned the direction now time time is also a scalar quantity right so all this mass length time they come under scalar quantities now what do you mean by vector quantity not only mass you see even uh, speed speed is also a scalar quantity right because speed is nothing but what distance upon time how much distance i'm traveling with what time i have taken but speed does not determine which direction it is going right so i'm just going with 2 km per hour speed 2 km per hour speed i don't know the direction i'm just going that is speed if i'm specifying the direction then speed with direction gives rise to velocity right so if i'm saying 2 km per hour east this is velocity okay if i'm saying 2 km per hour west 
See, east, west, north, south. That means I am specifying direction. That speed changes to velocity. And that becomes a vector quantity. Okay? So, scalar quantities are the quantities which only have magnitude. But they do not have direction. But vector quantities are the quantities which have magnitude plus direction. Okay? Magnitude along with direction gives rise to vector quantities. Example is displacement. <clears throat> what is displacement? Okay. So suppose I am traveling from here to here. Okay. So suppose this is x, <clears throat> which is my initial position. Let me take it as x1. And this is my final position x2. So distance I can say is, suppose I have traveled here, from here to here is 100, from here to here is 100. Again from here to here is 100. So, from x1, the total part that I have traveled becomes something called as distance. But what is displacement? Just what is final position that is x2 minus the initial position x1. Right? So, x2 minus x1, the shortest distance between them gives a displacement. Right, children? Yes? So, displacement is given with my delta x, which is nothing but x2 minus x1. The final position minus the initial position gives rise to displacement. Right? So, displacement is nothing but what? It is a vector quantity because it knows where it is the final position. Right? I know where I am reaching. So, I know the direction. So, displacement becomes a vector quantity. Now, similarly, velocity. What is velocity? Change in displacement with time. There is a change in displacement with respect to time. Right? So, displacement is already a vector quantity. So, change in displacement will again be a vector quantity. So, velocity is also a vector quantity. Understood, children? Speed is not a vector quantity because speed does not determine the direction. So, speed is a scalar quantity whereas velocity is a vector quantity. Got it? What are scalars and vectors for vector quantity? Can someone quickly give me an example for vectors? Vectors? Scalars you all know, right? Of course. Yes, force is what? What is the definition of force? Ma'am, it's, uh, it's, it's mass times acceleration okay. produced okay. on that object. Yes. Now, acceleration is also a vector quantity. A vector Why quantity. acceleration is a vector quantity? Because it has velocity. Change in velocity with respect to time gives you acceleration. Right? So, acceleration multiplied with mass gives us force. So, force also becomes a vector quantity. Very good. Very good. Excellent example. Anybody else? We have studied so many. Give me a few. Give me a few examples of vectors. Come on, children. Anything that you talk about. Yes? So, did you understand what is scalar and vector? Can someone quickly give me examples of vector quantities? Work done. Work done is also a vector quantity, right? Force, force into area, force by area, right? So, yes, so all these are different, different examples of scalar and uh, vector. Velocity. Sorry? Velocity. Velocity, yes. Velocity is also a vector quantity because displacement, displacement upon time gives you velocity, right? So, that is also a... Well, you can say all the fields are uh, vector quantities, electric yes. field, magnetic field, anything, yes. gravitational field. Because they all have a direction, right? They all have a magnitude, they have a numerical yes, value and they all know which direction that they are going. Then I say that it is a vector quantity. Clear? So, after knowing about this, now let me teach you how many minutes do we have? How many minutes do we have, children, for the class? 33 minutes. 3 minutes. Okay, I can finish. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, now let me teach you what do you mean by path length, path length, and displacement. Okay, path length is also called as distance. Path length is also called as what? Distance. Okay. Now, when I am talking about path length, path length is nothing but the total distance that is travelled by the object is called as the path length. Alright. So, if I am talking about 
path length. Okay, so the length of the path covered by the object in a given time interval is called as path length or its um, distance. Basically, its distance that an object is traveling. Okay, so length of path covered by the object. So suppose this is an object. Okay, so how much this this object is covering the path? This is called as distance. So path length is nothing but distance. Okay. So if this object is traveling from here to here, that is hundred, hundred meters. Then suppose here it is traveling again hundred meters. Then here again it is hundred meters. Then here again it is hundred meters. Then here to here again it is hundred meters. So how much path length has it traveled? Complete distance. Hundred plus hundred plus hundred plus hundred plus hundred. That is one, two, three, four, five hundred meters it has traveled. Right, so this the the length of the entire path of the object that is traveling is called as path length, and path length is also nothing. It's it's also called as distance. Okay, so distance and path length are same. The total path covered by the object and the SI units of distance is meters. Okay, meters. Then in uh, what will you say? What what is it in CGS system? In MK system we call it as meters. In SI system we call it as meters. In CK system, we call it as centimeters, right? Yes. So these are nothing but different uh, measurements of distance. Now, what is displacement, children? Displacement is nothing but the shortest distance that is covered by the object. Now, suppose if I am taking the same example, okay? Now, suppose from here to here, if I am just measuring, it is instead of five hundred, it it is just three hundred. Okay, so if this is x two, the final position, and this is x one, the initial position, then I say that displacement is nothing but what delta x. Delta x is nothing but final position that is x two minus the initial position that is x one. So x two, if here it is five hundred minus five hundred minus, if I started with some uh, some distance that is suppose two hundred, then I get three hundred, right? So three hundred is nothing but displacement. Okay. So displacement is a vector quantity, and it is the shortest. Okay. So distance I taught you in the previous class, right, children? Path length and distance. So I hope everybody is clear with distance and path length. Yeah. So now, if an object now suppose this is the axis. All right. The object is moving from the origin. All right. So it's moving from zero to a. Suppose it moves at a position a here. All right, and suppose it has covered hundred meters, and again back it goes to the origin again. It goes back to hundred meters again. So what is the total path length covered? Two hundred meters. Two hundred, right? So coming it is hundred, going it is two hundred. So this is nothing but how we calculate the path length, right? So I have a simple problem for you. Please take down a problem. It says a scooter. Please take down a scooter. is moving along a straight line ab is moving along a straight line a straight line ab a scooter is moving along a straight line ab covers a distance of covers a distance covers a distance of it covers a distance of 360 meters Twenty-four seconds. Then it says, and returns back from B to C, and returns back from B to C. It returns back from B to C, and covers two forty meters. And covers two forty meters. It covers two forty meters in eighteen seconds. In eighteen seconds. Find the total path length traveled by the scooter. Find the total path length traveled by the scooter. All right. So, what are they telling? What is the question they are telling? They are just asking you what is the total path length that is traveled, right? Now, a scooter is moving along a straight line AB. It is going along a straight line AB. And it covers a distance of three sixty meters in twenty four seconds. 
and returns back from B to C. It is going back from B to C, it's saying returning. It covers 240 meters in 18 seconds. Find the total path length traveled by the scooter. See, to find the path length, do I even need time? Not required, right? So directly I can add the path length. So therefore, path length is equal to, or total path length is equal to 360 meters plus 240 meters. So what is 360 plus 240? 600 meters. 600, 600 meters. meters. That's all. Easy? So that's these type of problems in top 4 or 2 marks. Alright? Now next thing is, after knowing about path length, let's study about displacement. Displacement. See, this is all basics that you've already studied. Okay? So just brushing it up. And this entire chapter is just based on basics that you've studied. Alright? So we will go ahead with displacement. Now, displacement is nothing but distance with a direction, okay, or the shortest distance traveled is called as displacement, we say. Now, if I'm going, suppose I'm going a path length this much, this is the starting point x1 and this is the ending point x2. So, instead of going full distance, I displacement, the shortest distance traveled between two objects is called as what? Between two points in the object is called as displacement and displacement is denoted by delta x where delta x is equal to x2 minus x1 final position minus the initial position all right now we say now there are three cases which arise when i'm talking about displacement okay so displacement always remember displacement is a vector quantity all right <coughs> displacement can be positive displacement can be negative and displacement can be zero also. Alright. So, what do you mean by displacement is positive? Now, if I'm going from one position to other position. Alright. So, if I'm going from here to here in a positive direction. Then I say in a positive direction of distance. Then I can say that my displacement is positive. Now, if I'm going in a reverse way. Okay. From, again, from there to here. Again, if I'm going, I'm traveling back. Then I say that the displacement is negative. Right. Now, when do I say displacement is zero? If, suppose this is the starting position of the particle, it goes here, it comes back here only again. Okay? Or if this is the starting position, it, this is the position where it has started from, that is x1. Again, it goes and the final position is here only, x2. So, x2 minus x1 is zero at that time. Right? So, displacement is zero if starting position and ending position is same. Why? Because the difference. Suppose this is 5 meters or something. Again, it comes back to 5 meters only. So, initial and final position is what? The same. Right? So, displacement is zero in such cases. Right? So, we have three cases which arise when I'm talking about displacement. Now, cases such as if x1 is greater than, sorry, if x2, if final position x2 is greater than x1, then the displacement is always positive. Okay? But if the final position x2 is less than x1, then the displacement is negative. And if x1 is same as x2, then the displacement is 0. Understood children? Positive displacement, negative displacement and 0 displacement. Okay? Now, either displacement of the object in motion can be positive, negative or 0. Displacement is a vector quantity as it possesses both magnitude and direction. Now I know where I'm going, right? Now if I'm if I'm going from this position to this position, I know which direction I'm going. So that is why we say that displacement is a vector quantity. Why? Because it has a value to it, right? It has magnitude to it and also it, it knows which direction it is going. So that is why we say that displacement is a vector quantity. Got it? Clear? Clear with this? Clear? Any doubts to here, children? Yes, okay. Now, let us differentiate between distance and displacement. Okay, so what is the difference between, you only tell me, what is the difference between distance and displacement? Yes? The first thing is distance is a scalar quantity, displacement is a vector quantity. Okay. This is a scalar quantity, why? Because direction is not known. 
path length. In path length, I don't require direction. So that's why distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity. Right? Because I need the uh, yeah. direction. Yes. Yes. From this itself, it follows that, uh, from the fact that it is vector, it follows that it can have negative uh, yes. values, yes. whereas distance can't have negative values. Right. Negative values, positive values, and also zero. Do you think distance can ever be zero? Do you think zero distance yes. is there? It did not travel anything. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Zero distance. Distance is not there. So, distance can never be zero. Velocity can be zero. If it's not traveling anywhere, velocity is zero because it's not traveling anywhere. But distance will only measure once it starts traveling, right? So distance can never be zero. But displacement can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. Yes? So distance is always positive. Okay? Always positive or negative also it can be. But it can never be zero. Oh, no, no, no. It can't be negative. Why is the distance can't be negative? Because direction is because not known. Because it does not have direction. Direction is not known. So only positive dis distance can only be positive. That's all. But because we know the direction, it's going forward or it's coming backward. If it's coming backward, then it is definitely a negative displacement, right? If it goes to the same position where it started, then it becomes zero. So this, these are the two differences. Is there any other difference? Ma'am, like there's a relation between distance and displacement. Uh -huh. uh, that distance is always greater than or equal to displacement. Distance is always greater. Yes, it might be greater or it might be equal to. Very good. That is one of the difference. One more thing. What about displacement? Displacement is always lesser or equal to distance. Yeah? Yes. This, it is always lesser than distance or it is equal to distance. Okay? So, if I am going just one direction, that is A to B, here distance is also 20 kilometers, displacement is also 20 kilometers here. Right? There is not a complete full path covered. Right? So, path length also I get 20 kilometers and displacement is also 20 kilometers here. Right? So, yes. So, distance can be more or equal to uh, displacement, but displacement should be less or equal to distance. That is one of the difference. Right, children? So, is the concept clear to you? What is distance and displacement? Yes? So, if you know distance yeah. and displacement thoroughly, then we can go ahead with velocity and speed. Okay? So, velocity and speed, again, this depends on distance and displacement. So after knowing about distance and displacement, let us know about what do you mean by velocity and speed. So before that, we will solve one more problem. Okay, let's solve one more problem. Please take down. A body starts moving. A body starts moving. A body starts moving. A body starts moving from minus 20 meters from minus 20 meters towards positive x-axis towards positive x-axis towards positive x-axis as shown in figure so this is the figure that they have given to us it's a straight line like this okay then here it is 0 to plus 50 10 20 30 40 50 here again it is minus 10, minus 20, then minus 30, minus 40, and minus 50. Okay, then, okay, so this is, they have told it is positive x, this is negative x, right? Positive and negative, this is 0. Then they have told, okay, so this is basically the diagram that they have given, okay? He, uh, he turns at, at time instant T2 and starts moving towards minus x axis. They say, he turns, he turns at time instant T2, at time instant T2, he turns at time instant T2 and starts moving towards negative x axis and starts moving towards negative towards negative x-axis. At time t3, at time t3, at time t3, what happens? He reached at minus 50 meter. He reached at minus 50 meters. As shown in the figure. As shown. Okay? So basically they have already shown here, t1, this is 0, 
then uh, they have given minus 20 this way this ball is here okay then he goes here and okay plus 40 here your no ball is here with this that object okay then minus 50 here and this is again p3 okay so here they have mentioned this is p1 and this is p2 okay now okay what you have to find find the displacement and distance for the time interval find the displacement and distance for the time interval find the distance and displacement for the time interval first one p2 p1 p2 p1 p2 and second one second one is p1 to p2 p1 to p2 okay so we have to find what children we have to find the displacement and distance for this time interval p1 to p2 what is the time interval and p1 to p3 what is the time interval all right now we know that for distance we observe the actual path length and for displacement we observe the change in position right so if i'm talking about distance first one for p1 to p2 first one for p1 to p2 what will i do for p1 to p2 distance covered will be how much distance covered will be 60 meters why 60 from 0 to 40 is plus 40 right now again he goes back p1 to p2 oh sorry p1 to p2 so it is again uh, 10 20 30 40 50 60 very good so therefore can we take it as 60 plus 60 meters yes yes, yes children sir. because he, this is p1 this is t2 so from p1 to p2 is covering 10 20 30 40 50 60 60 meters now next thing is uh, for p1 to t3 so second one from p1 to t3 so from p1 to t3 what is the distance covered okay uh, wait wait distance is finished so what is displacement here what is displacement 60 meters itself again 60 itself right because it's a peculiar motion now if i'm talking about the second one p1 to p3 what is the distance covered from P1 to T3? 30 meters. How? Distance. I'm talking about distance. Yes, from distance is 30 meters. No. Displacement is minus 30 meters. No, no, no. P1 to T2, T2 to T3. 160 meters. First, we go from P1 to T2. If I'm talking about P1 to T3, the distance I'm talking. So, first P1 to T2, then T2 to T3. How much distance will be? The total path length covered. So if I'm talking from P1 to P3, I can't hear you children. Can you hear me? Ma'am, yes ma'am, you're on it. Ma'am, yes. so from P1 to P3 is that total path length which is 2 times 60 plus 30. 2 times 60 what? Because he returns to oh, P1. Yes, yes, after right. Here to here, here to here it is 60, again 60 plus 30. Right children, correct? So total path length. So if I'm talking about A, B and C. Okay, so if I ask you what is the distance covered from A to C, distance, you should cover with A. First he goes from A to B, then B to C, then C to A, like this. Okay, now similarly if I am talking from P1 to P3, first he goes from P1 to P2, then P2 to P1, again back P1 to P3. Understood? Yeah, so therefore, we already know that this much is 60, so again 60 back, 60 plus 30, so 120 plus 30 nothing but 150 yards. Easy? Understood how do we find distance? Total path length? See, distance means total path length. Displacement is the shortest. Now, what is displacement here from P1 to P2? Minus 30 meters. Why minus 30? It's backward. Yes. In the negative. Yes, very good. Now, displacement is nothing but minus 30. Why? Because it's in the backward direction. Right? So, displacement I can write it as minus 30 meters. Always look at the direction. If it is going positive, then
then it is positive displacement. If it is going to the opposite direction, then it is a negative displacement. Got it children? Easy? Understood? Easy problem, right? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What about learning understanding, Uma? Prachika and Piyusha? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, children. So now we will go ahead with uniform motion in a straight line. Uniform motion. Uniform motion in a straight line. Uniform motion in a straight line. Okay. Now what do you mean by uniform motion in a straight line? What do you mean by uniform motion first? Now, if I'm taking my distance along y-axis, okay, let me denote distance as x. Okay, and time along y, time along the x-axis. Okay, so uniform motion is a body is said to be in uniform motion if, if it travels equal distance in equal intervals of time. Okay, now suppose this is origin, time taken is 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 4 second, and distance covered is 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter. One At 1 second, body reaches 1 meter, 2 seconds, 2 meters. 3 seconds, 3 meters. 4 seconds, 4 meters. So I get a straight line from the origin. Right? So this motion is said to be in uniform. Uniform motion. If the object covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, then it is said to be in uniform motion. This we have already studied in the previous class, right? Yes? Yeah, Have you all studied this? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Now, example is a vehicle running with a constant speed of 10 meter per second will cover equal distances of 10 meters in every 10 seconds, right? So, we say that the motion will be uniform. Now, note that for a uniform motion along a straight line in a given direction, the magnitude of the displacement is equal to the actual distance covered by the object. So, in this case, what I can say, whatever is the distance, distance is same as the displacement. Distance covered by the object in uniform. Now, when I'm talking about uniform motion, here are two categories come into picture. Okay? That is when object is stationary. Object is in variable motion. Okay. So, what will happen if an object is stationary? And what will happen if the object is in variable motion? What do you mean by variable motion? It's changing. The speeds are changing, right? The, that means the distance per unit time is changing. It's not a straight line. So that gives rise to variable motion. So what happens? Let us check out. First case is when object is stationary. When an object, when an object is stationary. What will happen if an object is stationary, okay? Suppose that an object is at P in my x-axis here. This is the origin, right? Now, see children, if any object is stationary, okay? Now, suppose this is 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 4 second. And this is distance of 1 meters, 2 meters, 3 meters, 4 meters, so on. Now, suppose an object is at 3 meters in, from the origin. Again, it is regardless, it's not changing its motion. It is however, how much of a time it goes, it's still in 3, minute, three meters only. At 1 second, it's still at 3 meters. 2 seconds, it's still at 3 meters. 3 seconds, it's still at 3 meters. 4 seconds, it's still at 3 meters. It's not changing its motion at all, right? So, in stationary objects, I will get a straight line which is parallel to the time axis. Yes? Yes? So, therefore, we say that as this distance will remain unchanged with the passage of time, distance is same. It's not changing at all because it's a stationary object. Stationary means what? Which is at rest. Object which is not moving, like truck. Okay? Suppose one truck stood somewhere, uh, at three, somewhere around 3 meters it has stood from reference point. 1 hour passed, 2 hour passed, 3 hour passed, 4 hour passed, 1 day passed, it's still there only. Did the position of the truck change? No, it didn't change. So this is the graph that we get. Right? So it will be parallel. So whatever 
this, uh, you know, whatever is the motion, it will be, you know, not motion basically, the distance or the distance graph will be actually parallel to the time axis, the position of the object, we say, right? So, as this distance will remain unchanged with the passage of time, the position time graph of such object will be shown in this. First, what will happen is, it is distance, right? So, if I'm going one set, one meter, so this can be what, daily of motion? Yes. This is correct, right, Guru? Yes. So this is the graph which you get for variable motion, basically. So in a variable motion, the object will cover unequal distances in equal intervals of time. So the position time graph of varying motion will never be a straight line. So whenever you have a variable motion, you will never get a straight line. Okay, so these are the two graphs when an object is stationary and when the object is in variable. Any doubts still here, children? Am I clear with the concept? Yes, ma'am. Yes? All right, perfect. Now, we'll study about non-uniform motion and the speed and velocity, then acceleration, little bit of derivations in the next class. Okay, so I'll see you in the next class then. Take care, have a nice day.